Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 81, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them. So let's get right to it. The first one's called Throne of God. Hi, Mark. Please send me a copy of the Throne of God paper. Just listen to the flight instructor show, and I'm just dying to read the air, traffer, air traffic controller's paper. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Keep up the great work. Many thanks, peace, uh, love, and good energy. And that's from Bob Jellyman. And what he's talking about is when the flight instructor was talking to the air traffic controller and said he wrote a kind of like a unified theory paper. So I've got it on my desktop. If anyone wants it, you can just shoot me an email saying, I want the throne of God, uh, along with all the other stuff you guys asked for. Moving on. <clears throat> this one's called... This one's called machine freezing. Come on. Okay. Urgent question. Hello, Mark. My name is Roya and I'm doing a physics project for school, but need a little help. I want to ask why the stars change positions over the course of a year. My friend and I have been measuring the same star at the same time for three months and it's changed its position from 50 to 90 degrees, but I haven't been able to find an explanation for that. I have to hand the project in by the 27th, so I'd really be grateful for a quick response. Thank you so much for your help in advance. Sincerely, a high school student genuinely interested in science, and unfortunately, uh, he sent it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just so you know, if you send me an email like that, and because you know I skim emails, and even though it said urgent question, I have a lot of people say urgent question, and you send it three days before your paper is due, yeah, it's probably not going to get answered in a timely manner. So, sorry about that. This one's called Flat Earth Parable. All right, this one's a little longer, but let's read it. Uh, there once stood 25 wise men on a platform of truth. Each day they would in turn educate and share their observation of the earth, and it was the truth. Below their platform lay all the kingdoms of the earth. Each morning as its people were awakened, more and more gathered to hear these things they inherently knew to be just and true. Despite what the people of the kingdoms had been taught by those that ruled the kingdoms, Word spread and continued to spread until truth reached unto the farthest reaches of all the kingdoms. The rulers of the kingdom saw these men that spoke no falsehood and continued to speak just and truthful things. It was then decided that each day the king's army would go to the platform of which truth was shared and arrest one of the wise men, one each day until the truth was no more. For each wise men arrested, one million of the awakened arrived at the foot of the platform to hear what they knew was just and true. The wise men continued to speak only the truth. Twenty-four days had now passed, and only a single wise man remained. He continued to speak only just and true things, and on that day stood twenty-five million, listening to the one that remained and continued to speak and share those things that were just and true. The twenty-five million spoke to the wise men, saying, The kings of the earth fear you. There were once twenty-five, and now you are the last. The king's army shall come to put you in chains and torment until your death. As the king's army approached, the wise, men the wise men turned smiling, without fear, and with only justice and truth in his eyes and words. The wise men spoke one last truth to those that stood before him and said, People of this great earth, my time has come, and without fear I must now pass as all things must pass. The kings of this earth never feared the twenty-five, let alone a single man. It is just and truthful things that shakes their foundation and makes them tremble great people of the earth who have gathered here and who have set all beliefs aside now you know what is just and what is true and from the first just and truthful word that has been spoken it is you the 25 million that your kings have always feared and with these just and truthful words that have been shared you like the 25 before me now know there is nothing to fear so I say to each of you, go and share these just and truthful things that have been spoken. The platform is now yours and no longer belongs to those that persecute what is just and true. They no longer have control over the earth or you. Thanks and God bless. Jim Shapa. Whatever. Call him Jim. Thanks, Jim. That was nice. I don't know where you got it, but it's good. And if you came up with yourself, even better. This one's called Effie. 
Mark, if NASA and other large organizations are lying to us and sharing edited footage, isn't it highly unlikely that a high up member of an organization hasn't leaked flat earth? When you see a successful launch and the whole room full of engineers behind their computers celebrating the launch, have they all been lied to? Yes. Yes, they have. <laughs> Absolutely, they've lied to. Forget about the people in the engineers behind their computers. How about everybody on television watching the launch? That's who it's for. So yeah, if they haven't been lied to, I just can't grasp my king, my king, uh, around how they wouldn't leak it to a close friend or family member. Thanks, Carter M. No, no, no. The engineers, uh, everybody in the control room has been lied to. The only guys that really need to know are the actual telemetry guys. 99% of any space program is kept in the dark period. Uh, somewhat different than the Manhattan Project when they were building uh, the first atomic weapon, where they had hundreds of thousands of people working on it. And nobody knew for sure what they were working on exactly, because it was all compartmentalized. This one's called the throne room of God paper. I'm getting a few requests for those. Hi, Mark. I've been studying flat earth for three, three years now. And the video from two years ago with the air traffic controller and the pilot just blew my mind. Great interview. I have several pilot friends who I'm in a group with buying property in the Ozarks for our bug out plan. <laughs> nice. Actually, the Ozarks are pretty nice. They are not on board yet about FE, but this show should do the trick. Would you please send me the paper so I can share it with my son and any other skeptic friends so we can all be on the same page finally? I ordered some product from your website last week, and I am very familiar with Rob and Zen's work. Did Rob ever interview Dale? Uh, Robinson's work. I don't think he did. Uh, or maybe he did. I can't, I can't remember. I, unfortunately, I, I, it's hard for me to track down everybody else's shows. I would love to hear more from him. Uh, there's only so much time in the day. God bless you, brother, and your awesome work at exposing the truth. Love at him, Cat. That's from Cat Jackson Reddle. She's in Texas, I think. So I sent her that. This one's called an Antarctic survey team. Mark was listening to the Q&A email show when one of the emails said about a survey team on the flight to the Falklands. This made me think how many survey teams fly to the Falklands. <laughs> I wonder if they're just guys taking equipment down and then returning. Maybe. I don't know. That was also sent to Patricia Steer. That's from Rob. Thanks, Rob. This one's called No Subject. Hi, Mark. I've recently discovered your videos, and I hope to be on one of them from this email next time you upload. Well, not next time, but yeah. Uh, you may have answered this before. I don't want to look through the hundreds of videos you posted to find it. I'm just wondering, what makes the Earth different? Well, that's a pretty unusual question. All the other planets we have found are round. Ah, there we go. So what makes the Earth the only flat one, and why? And if the reason is because we've never seen the other planets in 3D, then what about asteroids, the moon? You're, you're, all, you're talking about the same thing. What's the difference between a light in the sky that's a planet, a light in the sky that's an asteroid, or the big light in the sky, which is the moon? Those are all rocks from space that are round or shaped and not disc-like. I'm not attacking. I'm only curious to the actual answer. I would also prefer if you simply email me back as I worry I may forget to see your next videos. Thank you for reading and responding sincerely. A link between the past. He didn't even leave his real name. That's why. I, come on, guys. I, it's the old question. I, I don't even have to answer this one necessarily. But the short answer is, who told you the lights in the sky were spheres? That would be who, who the astronomers who just took a guess or NASA, the United States military. Take your pick. One of the two. So you're taking a, a, the words of someone who's just just taken a stab at what's up there or the United States military. Who are you going to trust in that case? I would say neither of them. Do your own research. Ask questions. You know my stuff. This one's called my new license plate. Well, I believe it's uh, at least the bottom is laugh. Uh, and he sent me and let me, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. It's four megs. Hopefully it won't take too long to load. Loading, loading, loading. Yeah, it's Nevada. It's flat. So anyone that, that's doing a customized license plate, again, you don't have to send me your name or, or a picture of you next to your plate. In fact, most people just send me a picture of the plate. Uh, do whatever you can with six, seven, or eight letters, depending on your state or Canadian province, because I don't think that any other countries in the world do vanity plates, except for the United States and Canada. And I will put it in a compilation. In fact, my next compilation is coming up in about no, less than two weeks. This one's called Force the Line Project. Mark, a slight modification to the force, uh, the line experiment by Brian Mullen. Use water for the top level and laser 
for the bottom rung. Start in the middle and go two directions instead of starting at one end. And that's from Greg. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Like it. This one's called my license plate. Yep, nope, nope, same guy, Nevada. Sorry, I responded to him and he responded back. This one's called The World We Know. Mark, my name is Jack. And I would think that the more videos you upload, the more likely to change your email. Nope. Why would I keep changing? No. Well, uh, I'm going to try to use this email at all possible and just keep using it. It's actually worked for me really well over the last 20 years. Hoping that isn't the case. I do have some interesting thoughts to share with you. Not exactly the kind of thoughts or questions I would expect you or anyone to answer right off the bat. Before watching your videos and others by Eric Dubé, <laughs> Dubé, Dubé and ODD, I set my mind in an unbiased mode. It's what anyone would have to do to even consider any possibilities as potential truth. Forget everything I've learned for that moment and be ready and willing to entertain any thought without having to accept it as truth. That being said, I've noticed a lot of people seem to be advocating the flat earth as proof that God exists or proof of their respective faith. Well, of course you would. Why wouldn't you? If this place was built, if it has an, an inorganic shape, then it had to have been built by somebody. And then we're talking either an advanced civilization or a or the divine. It can only be one of the two. And then you're kind of splitting hairs. Considering that our surroundings or habitat seems to be by intelligent design, I am convinced that we are created. But that would be the extent of my personal belief, simply because I can't afford to be conclusive in anything. I have to leave every door open. Like we keep fishing in an aquarium, there's always that possibility that we're being kept in a terrarium. We throw all kinds of artifacts in the fishbowl with the idiotic supposed intention of making the fish feel at home. In all likelihood, all the ancient artifacts here uh, in our terrarium may also be for the purpose of making us feel as if we have a history here in this terrain in this day and age as we continue to discover that we've been lied to and if everything that we know is a lie and nothing today seems to make any sense what makes you think the truth will be any different if you're interested in some of my personal thoughts please feel free to respond or text me i thank you for your time jack menendez yeah, good points. Like them. This one's called Urgent Experiment Urgent. <laughs> just just because you put exclamation points at the end of your title and make it all caps doesn't mean I'm going to read the entire thing, just so you know. Hi, Mark. We have talked a few times in the air. I'm a retired airline pilot. I hope my subject line catches your attention. <laughs> I'm in the initial stage of setting up a novel flat earth experiment for early fall. I need a small crew of people from the mid-Atlantic, North Carolina area that would be willing to help me mostly just to spot and photograph an aircraft flying along the coast. Very easy, very enjoyable kind of activity. This is an aviation experiment that I want to conduct along the North Carolina Outer Banks, which will not prove either that the Atlantic which will prove either that the Atlantic Ocean has curvature or not. I'll put my money on not. If you could put me in touch with at least one person from my area in Greensboro, uh, North Carolina, I'd be indebted to you. Thanks for your help, Mark. Uh, did I write him back? No, I did not. Uh, if you still need help with that and you're listening, uh, because it's been a little while now, um, let me know. Because I have no, I actually not have heard this from this guy again and again. I'm I'm answering the emails in the order they're received, and as you know, it takes some time because I get a lot of emails, and I have to throw away a bunch, and I get a lot of spam, and these are what's left. This one's called "Center of the United States Higher Than the Coast." Well, higher is one thing. No, no, not higher. It would be, and I'm not even looking at the email yet. Well, you know what? Let's just read the email. Mark, this just popped into my head. I'm wondering why the center of the U.S. isn't many miles higher than, say, L.A. or New York. No, it's not higher. On a globe, it would be just every port is, po point is the highest point on a, on a globe, right? Because you're, you're looking down in all directions. Technically, you're looking over the hill in both directions. Uh, so, no, it's not. It's not higher on a flat on a flat plane. No, the the United States is perfectly flat. There is no high point. Uh, I am new to flat Earth, so I don't know if this has been covered already. Yes, it has. What I'm saying here is elevation is expressed as feet above sea level. So if the rounders were right, ooh, rounders, I may steal that. Shouldn't the center of continents be much higher than the edges? Uh, no. I would love to see the math on this one. I just found a calculator while I'm writing this. This is from a viewing height of ten feet. Da, 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 da. Okay. 
And that's from Christian. No, no, Christian, you're, you're again, because of the globe conditioning, you are thinking of it still as a globe where whatever point, I mean, technically the West coast would be higher. It doesn't really matter. It's flat, super flat. Just, just think of it as flat. You got to get rid of the globe. You got to get the globe out of your head. Okay. This one's called Arcadia meetup picks by Alex. And he sent me some picks from the Arcadia meetup that we did back in Los Angeles. Super great. Yep. 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 And I'm going to save that one off to the side because I want to use those shots for thumbnails now. Thanks for that, Alex. Sorry, I probably didn't respond to it. Or maybe I did. This one's called Clue 13. Hey, Mark, I think you should modify your Clue 13 to include a NASA astronaut and yourself get into a vacuum chamber at the same time with an official already used in space suit. The suit should and would be tried and true and any astronaut would be willing to take that challenge. You going in by yourself, anything could happen and they could blame it on something malfunctioning and not necessarily the suit in a vacuum. Just a thought I had and decided to share. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, what he's talking about is Flat Earth Clues number 13, The Lost Nail, in which case I, I it's the easy test, which is tell me how an astronaut suit works. Not, not the oxygen, not the heating and cooling, not that. Tell me how you stop the vacuum from making that suit go tight as a snare drum and then bursting. Because a suit is really just, uh, the spacesuit is just a, a bag of air. It's just a thick balloon. And the vacuum, the force, you know, the lack of pressure on the outside would pull at that thing. Well, the, the high pressure would try to equalize and, and it would go like a balloon. I mean, that's the whole, it's balloon physics. And that's, that was my challenge. Where, where, how does this suit work? I can't even figure out how it would work in the fictional world, not just our world. Tell me, please, any, any skeptics out there, email me, tell me how the, the balloon suit works. And you'd say, well, no, it's layers. I got that yesterday during a debate. It's layers. It's like, no, a basketball has layers, a couple, you know, an inner bladder and an outer skin, and it still blows up and it's super, super tight. And, and a car tire even has more layers and it blows up and it's really, really tight. It's, you cannot do anything in it. So tell me how a person sits inside a very, very tight balloon and moves their arms and legs without any effort whatsoever and their fingers to where they can manipulate electronics. Tell me how that happens. It can't. There is no explanation for this. They just did it and glossed over it and said, well, we're doing it, so it's not a big deal. Oh, yeah, we're not going to show anybody testing in a vacuum chamber for, for real. We'll, we'll simulate that every once in a while. And very, very few things with people in a vacuum chamber and none with just a self-contained um, backpack like the ones that they used in Apollo. And not to go off on a little rant here, but even if you could convince me that the microprocessors of 2018 can manipulate the heat and the cold, you know, stop, stop the extreme heat swings from hot and cold and regulate oxygen levels, not to mention the nitrogen, not, not only all that stuff, but what else is in that backpack that stops the vacuum of space from tearing it apart? And then tell me how they did it in 1969. Even if you could tell, even if you could convince me now, which you can't, there is no way, absolutely no way that you could do it in 1969. Sorry. So that's, that is my test. That is the one thing I'm just going to hang, hang my hat on with this one. This one's called weightless falling astronauts. Mark, I have enjoyed your videos. They really have challenged my thought. Uh, recently a YouTube channel Veritasium created a video called why are astronauts weightless? The presenter says the astronauts are not floating in space. They're actually falling. Yeah, I know this argument and the space station is falling as well. What keeps them in orbit and sideways velocity about 28,000 kilometers an hour that they are going so fast that they fall to the earth's surface that it curves away from them so that they do not float but fall giving the illusion of weightlessness the video states that the space station is only 400 kilometers away and that the astronauts are subject to the same type of gravity on earth no uh, the problem with that assumption is that weightlessness can be induced by falling due to gravity fails to look at their own newtonian laws specifically newtonian's newton's second law uh, F equals M times A in a curve. If gravity enables them to fall, they should be affected by the force in a curve as well. My calculations come to 4.9 G forces that should be exerted on the astronauts all the time. Hmm. Take for existence the loop, the loop. Oh yeah, yeah, the loop, the loop rides in the amusement parks. 
Uh, the faster the ride makes a loop, the more G-forces are exerted on the participant. That force created usually pushes you down in the seat of your ride. Yeah, imagine a ride that's going 17,000 miles an hour and that all the laws of gravity are being observed. It seems as though the presenter is picking and choosing what scientific rules they wish to follow. This video aired on ABC Australia. That's from regular Joe. Yeah, yeah, good points. Yeah, like it. This one's called Question. Greetings again, Mark. I realize that you must be very busy as you're a celebrity in the Flat Earth world, but was wondering if you could tell me if the Enclosed World site is up and running and was hoping you could answer my other questions as well. Yeah, the site is up and running, although it keeps being retooled by the peanut gallery. So you're going to have to bear with that. Uh, I attempted to register twice under another email address, but no avail. I'm trying to connect with others in this field and would very much appreciate any help you can give me. I registered with the Flat Earth Society, but it seems to be primarily a forum. Yeah, absolutely right. Do you have a website to visit besides Enclosed World? No, Enclosed World is it. Although there's some wonderful Facebook groups that are out there. Go to Facebook. Fantastic. Uh, Nathan Thompson runs a, a really great Facebook uh, group on Flat Earth. But he's not the only one. There's a whole bunch. Previously, I asked if you had any CDs to purchase. Nope. Being, being in an older generation, that's what first came to my mind. Although uh, my younger daughter doesn't listen to CDs in her car, what I really meant was DVDs. I want to find something really well done, such as your videos, but to sit my grown kids in front of, as I believe this is a much such an important subject and they think I'm crazy. Any suggestions would be much, much appreciated. I hope all is well in your world, Jennifer Frank. And she quotes John uh, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And uh, yeah, if you want to buy some good DVDs right now, I would suggest either Rob Skiba, Robbie Davidson. It's it, Most of it's going to be on the, on the Christian side. I don't know if anyone on the secular side is making a lot of DVDs. And since DVD is kind of an older technology now, uh, I don't think I'm going to be going into the DVD world anytime soon unless somebody does it for me. And by the way, if anyone wants to make DVDs, if you want to take the clues and put them on DVD and sell them, pfft, have at it. If you don't even, I mean, they're, they're creative commons license. So have, have fun with that. Um, if you want to, you want to shoot me an email, ask for my permission. That's fine. I mean, it, you don't need it. It literally, it's fair use. I, I, in fact, I made the flat earth clues just more or less creative commons really is fairly use. Just take them and the proof is out there there's people that have gotten millions of hits off the, fl the flat earth clues just by putting them on their channel and naming them something else in fact i, I missed them because there weren't even what flat earth wasn't even in the title like one of the, the biggest flat earth the, the flat earth video from the community that has the most hits on it from from people that are in the community is a guy who mirrored the clues and then named it uh under the dome full documentary it's got what four million pushing five million hits which is amazing, considering I had nothing to do with him. I never, never even talked to the guy. This one's called Question. Thanks for your effort. Uh, air traffic controller. It was a pleasure to hear this. I heard the details about the paper name Throne of God. Yep, yep. But this guy from Belgium, he won. He won the Throne of God. This one's called Space Force and Donald Trump. Hi, Mark. I'm a flat earther. My eyes were opened several months ago. I enjoy watching your videos and I've learned so much. It's amazing how long the lie has gone on and no one suspected anything until the truth started coming out a few years ago thanks to YouTube. I'm writing you because I trust what you've been doing about all this. There are a few videos I have watched where President Trump has admitted that the earth is flat. I have also seen him use the FE dome hand gestures in his rally speeches about protecting earth. My concern is that he is promoting Space Force and talking about going to the moon and Mars. I am a Trump supporter and I know his wit. Is he approving Space Force because he knows he can't go any farther than the dome? He is just waiting for the proof of the dome's existence via private rocket launches. And then we can all expose the truth on a larger level. Have you ever asked him about this? <laughs> uh, no. If you haven't, could you? I know you have a lot of followers and they probably want to know too. President Trump might even be open to with talking with you. Somehow I doubt that. Uh, but, but it's really nice that you would think of me. Any insight you can provide would greatly be appreciated. Thanks for all you're doing to promote the truth, Jan Swartzen. Uh, yeah, Jen, I don't think Donald Trump's going to be answering my calls any anytime soon. Uh, presidents, politicians, they try to stay away from 
conspiracy people. And even though, um, you know, I don't necessarily consider myself a hardcore conspiracy guy compared to at least what I used to be. And once I got into flat earth, that really changed. Uh, yeah, I, Trump's not going to talk to me. This one's called Calvin and Hobbes. Won't, won't matter by the time you read this. Nobody answered your trivia question. I loved that collection. Yeah, it was a trivia question on Strange World. And that was who was the author of uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. So thank you for that. This one's called Love Your Work. Thanks again for your continued efforts. Here is a photo for you to enjoy and share. And as a picture of a sun going off, sunrise off behind some buildings off to the distance. And that's from Genuine with a J. Thank you for that. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Please send me a survival guide. Regards. Eric Talyard. I don't think he's from here. And anyone that wants a free survival guide, it's about like two megs. It's a PDF format. I wrote it. It's called Empty Shelves. It was inspired by Katrina, and I send it off to anybody who wants it. All you have to do is put that in the title. I want survival guide. You don't even have to say hi or anything, although it would be nice if you, if you said hi, and I will shoot it off to you. This one's called Catalina, seen from 41 miles. Mark, here's a picture of Catalina Island, seen from Laguna Beach, California. It is approximately 41 miles away. Millions of people in Southern California know that you can see Catalina on a clear day. We just never realized the implications of that fact. The good thing is now these millions can see for themselves the truth. Yep, and I've used that in a thumbnail, Catalina Island. Anybody can go down there to La Laguna Beach and take a picture of Catalina Island. You should not be able to see it. I mean, there it is. Clear as day. Really nice, pretty day down in California. This one's called Justice. And this mail has no content. It's a picture. Picture. People are saying, you got to enunciate more on picture. Wow. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. This is a handwritten. There's a lot of stuff here. I, I'm sorry. I, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to muddle through that. Uh, this one's called Space Force. Mark, Space Force. Search Space Force from Amazon.com. Looks like the Bezos Trump conspiracy. Remember, this was a couple months ago. Yeah, Space Force. Uh, in fact, somebody, it was, it's hilarious. It's, it's really catchy. Somebody's going to make a movie. Somebody's going to get the movie rights to that name. It's, it's, too, it's too cool not to use. Uh, but it's like, Space Force? You, know, you, can, you can already hear guys chanting this, right? We totally like Starship Troopers. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Just a quick note to request your power outage survival guide. Also, to thank you for all you do. Your FE clues were instrumental in my waking up to FE. Thank you for everything you do and keep fighting the good fight. Brian in Joppa, Maryland. Very welcome, Brian. And I did send that to you. This one's called Science. That's from Chip Baker. He sent me science. By the way, a lot. Of, just a quick reminder, a lot of my intros and outros, if you don't recognize the song, it is probably done by a guy named Chip Baker right now. He does some great stuff. I, I get I send a lot of music clips and, and he knows kind of what I like and it's it's really, really cool, cool stuff. So I, I like what Chip sends. And so he sends me so many little I've got a I've got a folder with all sorts of chip chip songs that I use in promos for the Strange World show and meetups and it's a lot of fun. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, watch your documentary, Flat Earth Investigation. Okay, that must be a new one. I'm going to have to look into that because I didn't actually make one called Flat Earth Investigation. I'm intrigued and can feel in my heart that this is true, but still need more. Any suggestions, regards, Earl Carl Carlson. And yeah, hopefully Earl is on his way, but I will send him the Flat Earth shortlist for new people. It also depends if you're a strong Christian or not. If you're a strong Christian, I send you usually over to Rob Skiba's fantastic website, which is testingtheglobe.com. Uh, you know, the, the Christian community is, is massive in the Flat Earth. And uh, that's so if you're if you're in that side of things, that's where I send you. If you're in the other things that I send you to a, a, a playlist that I made called Flat Earth Shortlist for New People, which is on my channel, Mark Sargent. This one's called the second edition. Mark, when will the Flat Earth Clues second edition be coming out? That's from Rob. I I'm, don't know if he's talking about the book. You know what? There's got to be more of a demand for it. I mean, remember the, the original Flat Earth Clues is still 
causing uh, enough ripples that I don't get that many requests for more clues. I, mean, I get requests for some, sure, and which is why I did 13 and 14, and I've got 15 and 16 sitting on my desk, but I'm not going to make them until, I, until we get a lot more people clamoring for them. But it sounds like the original clues, the 11 or 12, really did their job. And so maybe, you know, we'll see. Again, if there's more push for it, if, if somebody comes forward and says, oh, yeah, we absolutely need it. Sure, but right now I'm, I'm so busy doing other things, but we might get to it. This one's called Accepting Flat Earth Was Easy For Me. Hi, Marcus. It was easy for me because the last five years my whole world has changed. I had been a Christian all of my adult life. I'm 61 now and was totally committed to my faith. That led me to study daily the Bible and all things related to it. I looked at history, science, politics, and other faiths. My reading and studying became my passion in life when I realized that I was learning and what I was hearing in my church didn't line up. I started asking questions and they said that they thought I would be happier somewhere else. <laughs> oh no, <clears throat> they were not interested in any kind of discussion. I tried to find a more biblical church, but had no real look, luck, uh, looked at Hebrew roots movement and messianic Judaism, but they were mostly just Christianity with Hebrew names, although they were doing the biblical feast days. By studying the feast day and realizing that Jesus could not be the Messiah and understanding the role that the Roman Empire, now the Catholic Church, had on all the churches, it was easy to walk away from all things Christian. With that said, it is important to state that I have not walked away from God. Well, at least, at least you got that. I have at this time no desire to become Jewish because I think it had been somewhat corrupted by man, but I am learning a lot from them. Uh, Karite, Kara, Karite Judaism. I had not. I do not know that word. Maybe the closest to the original faith that we have. Just not sure yet. Primarily, I study Torah now, and it definitely teaches an enclosed world. So yes, when I first heard you talk about flat Earth, it was easy for me. My son is now on his journey, also, but we are basically alone in our area. Most of my old Christian friends want nothing to do with me. They can't stand to have their beliefs questioned. Anyway, with all that said, I just wanted to say thanks for all your efforts and those of the Flat Earth community. Hope to make it to a meetup or a convention someday. I live in southern Indiana, and my phone number is. If you are in the area, give me a shout. If there is anyone else in the area, feel free to share my contact info. Thanks again, Dana Leffler. Very welcome, Dana. It's awesome. This one's called 630 Interview Number 168. Hi, Mark. I was listening to the interview where you're explaining why FE is important and the ramifications. You mentioned three aspects, academic debunking and change, geographical and world political new configuration and the religions aspect. But you missed the most important one and you know which one it is. And I'm surprised and allow me to prepare you better for your next interview. Okay, just kidding. You did not mention the chaos caused by the turmoil of the world population's mistrust in their governments, hiding the truth from them. Most likely a number of revolutions, daily street riots for months or years, total lack of order, violence against governments and scientific institutions, total confusion in the institutions holding certain world order, personal vendetta, stoppage of monetary aid to most needed third world countries for a long period of time, which will cause famine, lawlessness, mass migration, and massive genocides. And I don't want to depress you, but I can think of a multiple of other choices. <laughs> Yeah, there's a reason why I didn't put those in the clues. And I know full well what you're talking about. I tried to stay away from those. Uh, well, don't worry. Uh, this is not criticism since I know that it slips your mind to mention uh, it to your interrogators. But don't worry, I got your back. And that's from Albert. Yeah, I know. I know, Albert. Um, I know. There is a potential for that. No question. Absolutely no question. Uh, but I'm a glass half full type of guy. So I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Uh, this one's called Sunrise Illuminates the Underside of Clouds This Morning. Hi, Mark. This is Jeremy Browning from Mississippi again. I hope all is well. I know you're reading these emails quickly, so I'll get right to it. A lot of FE proofs make perfect sense to me, but there's still a few things that don't. The picture I've attached below is of early morning sunrise, and I know you can't show the attached pictures to the listening audience, but I'm sure you can give them a quick description of it, and they'll know what you're talking about. The sun in the early morning or in the late afternoon illuminates the underside of the clouds. This is something that I've had somewhat of a problem wrapping my head around. If we have a relatively small localized sun circling above the flat plane, love to get your thoughts and the observation. Thanks in advance. And that's from Yankee. 
1985. I don't know. Don't, don't know as far as how it's getting the underside and the upper side of the clouds. Don't have no real idea there. Don't I I you know, I will defer to the sun experts on on this. I really haven't spent much time on it. Uh, I would refer you to because I'm sure they've covered it to some degree. I I don't have everything memorized. Look at D I T R H, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Look at uh, Jeffrey Grupp in Zeteticism.com. Those two YouTube pages are really really great. I would look at those on anything regarding the sun. This one is called Stage Spacewalk Accidentally Exposed. And we're loading. Hey, Mark, don't know if this was a video worthy of one of NASA's many bloopers usable. That's from Clint out in Saskatoon. Hopefully I pronounced that right. That's up in Canada. And yeah, he, he sent me a, a nice little clip of more astronauts screwing up. Of course, my favorite video of astronauts screwing up, his collection anyway, has got to be, go to Mike Helmick's YouTube channel. Really, really great stuff where he covers, uh, you know, harnesses and green screen and, and just huge screw ups. I mean, I, I thought initially that the, the hairspray screw ups were, you know, they, 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 first off that they allowed women to have long hair completely unrestrained in the the space station and then because they knew because they were simulating it they permed it so it was absolutely rigid you could you could bounce a quarter off this hair and that alone i thought was bad but then mike took it took it one more notch up and he made some great videos so check those out this one's called clues question mark i have recently discovered and currently watching your documentary about the clues. What do you make of the Chinese space program's recent landing? And could it shed any light on the situation? Or was it just a hoax distract, distraction? Yes, it was. And what? And that's from uh, Aerial Point out in UK. If people don't realize, because the Americans don't even talk about it, and you think they would, is that supposedly China landed a rover on the moon three years ago. And it's been driving around ever since. But the images they're sending back are so terrible. They're so unbelievable that Western media mostly will not cover it. Only Chinese media will cover it. Not to say that the Chinese will believe anything. But, you know, we're, we believe that the world is pre that is presented to us. So if that's the only stuff that China is showing to other people, why wouldn't they believe it? You know, national pride. We won't show it to anybody. And you'd think if you had a Chinese rover that you would go to the Sea of Tranquility and look at all the stuff that the Americans left over, including what should be a still standing American flag and it'd be great advertisements. And yet they don't do it. Why don't they go to the Sea of Tranquility? It's because it's not up there. There's nothing up there. There's no moon to land on. I mean, there's there's an object called the moon, but you're not going to land on it. And the, the Chinese are just following suit with everybody else. Everybody it's like, yo, Americans got away with it. We can get away with it. At the highest levels of power, the Europeans, same sort of thing. Only a few people know, though. Remember, it's not the entire space program. Don't make that mistake. This one's called My Book, How to Tell Time by the Moon. Hey, Mark, I've got a silver bullet. I just realized my released my book, and it doesn't even show up from Google searching it yet. You can find it by searching Amazon site. I'm looking to reach an audience of people investigating or those that want to know how to know for a hundred percent fact that the earth is flat without needing to go somewhere or buy an expensive camera this is an irrefutable proof that you can observe from your porch help me out and plug this book for me please uh how to tell time by the moon a definitive flat earth guide detailing all you need to better understand the movements of the sun and the moon with real life practical benefits and that's by kennedy s walker and it's by it's paperback and ebook so look that up if you get a chance on Amazon. I have I've not done that yet. How to tell time by the moon. Cool. Thank you, Kennedy. Awesome. Hopefully you'll, you'll get some people looking at it. This one's called NASA admits there's a dome. Uh, let's see here. Hi, Mark. Long time listener. I would really appreciate all or, and I really appreciate all the work you've done for us in the community. I found this article while Googling. Is the firmament really the Van Allen belts? Because of a random thought. This article from NASA is very interesting. It seems as if they are acknowledging a dome in order to pre prepare themselves for an eventual semi coming out. If the dome is, is ever gets discovered, they can always just say, yeah, we know it was there. It was part of the Van Allen belts and 
it's all the humans fault like global warming have you seen this i'm a super i'm super late on this uh or has anyone covered this point me to the video if you've talked about it already uh, i'd love to know what you think figuring that it's propaganda what could it mean keep the great content coming thanks chris and the article is that actually at nasa.gov if you go there, it's from last year, actually. It says, NASA's Van Allen probe spot man-made barrier shrouding Earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, not buying it. All right, moving on. This one's called, Hi there, important flat Earth information. And it's a little big. And this guy's from, this guy's John Clinton O'Neill. I'm 20 years old. I'm from the city of Glasgow. I'm going to read, I'm going to read this first paragraph anyway, uh, which is located in central Scotland, U UK. Me and my brother are huge fans. I've been calling to the radio show and never got through. Very frustrating. How could you never get through? There's a, there's a UK number that you can dial. However, I hope you receive this email. I would like to share my current theories on what we are living on and how it came to be with you and your listeners. And is it okay? It's okay to share my name as I'm starting my own new YouTube channel and my own flat earth movement. I attached my first draught of my poster draft. You mean, you know what? I'm going to read this heck with it. It's not that long. Uh, the, my first one is that I managed to make a link between the Anunnaki and the flat earth. It goes like, so the earth was supposedly hit by Nibiru's satellite as Zechariah Sitchin said now my first hypothesis suggests maybe it hit us and destroyed half of the original planet and left half of it as they do say the earth used to be huge and that is where the moon came from so half a planet left and their planet is damaged while it passes so they are so advanced they create the dome with their own ecosystem and genetically engineered whatever life has left and created the slave race to mine the golden minerals to sustain the earth's atmosphere and fix their own one as you may be asking why would they hide this well if you do some research and you find the most world leaders european royalty some presidents of the united states also are descended from roman emperors egyptian hierarchy where the nephilim and anunnaki who were left on Earth supposedly when the others went back to Nibiru? Still with me? So the ones that are that were left, uh, Enki and Enlil, for example, I'm sure used to fight for power over Earth. So again, if uh, other world leaders are related, then it would explain why they would hide it from us. Okay, that's the first hypothesis. There's, there's two more. Second, same as above, only that we are the other half of earth or flat earth in a dark void in space and we're left here on our own and the dome and stars were put in the planetarium type enclosure to make us think we were not alone and the powers that be discovered it after admiral richard e bird was involved in operation high jump and deep freeze and they do not want us to know when they conducted operation fishbowl they have cracked a hole in the dome and discovered nothing outside but a black continuous void and they panic, so Admiral Byrd dies, NASA is formed, and they had to bury it by faking the moon landing. Okay. Third hypothesis, hypothesis, or wait for it, the Bible was true, and we're in a dome below waters, and no one ever penetrated it. But this one would mess with our minds. It is submerged under an ocean on a, an even bigger planet, and we are actually Atlantis. Ooh, and Atlantis was not a city. It could have been a whole civilization so advanced they destroyed themselves and submerged a dome and started their whole civilization genetic genetically from scratch, and it has failed uh, anyway by the looks of things as the human race are animals and wild. However, Mark, it was Matt Powerland who fir I first ever watched that got me down this rabbit hole and it works i mean i, I watch matt too and i am never gonna climb out until i get the truth i know all my ideas are crazy probably but that being said no matter what we are on it ain't a ball and i do not believe a word my teacher said to me even in school when i was 15 i was thrown out of class and put in detention for questioning the existence of the earth's core I've been and always been open-minded and have a tone of other ideas, ton, tone of other ideas. Oh, wait, is it spelled ton, ton? I think he's right. I think that's the European way they spell ton with an E on the end, right? Uh, I could discuss over the phone and go in much more detail if you ever have time. I hope it was a pleasure to read my ideas and hear from you soon. P.S. Send me a cool flatter t-shirt in the post. Oh, come on. Come on. I read your thing. Kind regards, John C. O'Neill, Glasgow. Cool. Uh, I better write back to him and tell him that I read this on the show. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I don't. This one's called 
aero spike engines. Why aren't we using them now? Answer, because NASA just might not need it uh, at the actual altitudes they aim for. And that was sent to a bunch of us. That was from Dave Holmes. Thanks, Dave. This one's called Some Thoughts You Helped Me Remember. Mark, to start off, you can use my story, but please keep my name out of it. As And I am not going to tell you the actual location of where this happened due to what we were doing at the time. I'll try to keep this short and sweet. Around 10 years ago, I was on a U.S. sub in the South Pacific while standing watch. As the f we picked up an orb-shaped object that could be seen on IR, that's infrared, but not on the visible light spectrum. We did a zig to get a couple bearings on the object that appears stationary, so I set the firing solution to zero knots, which put it at over 200 miles away. That's nautical miles, by the way. The ET nav... And I saw that it matched with an island on the charts. We ended up tracking this object for about a week, uh, maybe a little more, before we got close enough to see it was a volcano. And ne I never once thought about the curve and that we shouldn't been, have been able to see it. Now, this makes me wonder, uh, does IR have a longer vanishing point than visible light? Hmm... Yes, it does, I think, because, well, va longer vanishing points of the human eye, yeah, probably, because it's, you're, it's, it's kind of sorting through the whole visual distortion part, where your uh, infrared doesn't lie. That, that was what the Navy guy told me, you know, but, but interesting, interesting. Uh, another side note I can confirm, we rarely relied on GPS. Ring laser gyros is how most ships keep their heading. GPS was actually just for calibrating the RLGs before setting off to sea. Thanks for the info you have made available on YouTube. I don't know if the earth is flat, but I do know I have more questions than answers. And that's from a guy who shouldn't have signed his name if he wanted to be anonymous. So if you want to be anonymous, don't sign your name because if I get scattered or distracted, I will probably read it. So I'm not going to read it in this case. This one's called the Scottish Flat Earth Movement, and I'm not going to try to do a Scottish accent. And, and, he, and this is from this is from John C. O'Neill. Oh, again. Okay. So he he wanted to make sure that I, I read his email. So, okay. I'm not going to read it, obviously, a second time, but thank you for that. This one's called the Mandela Effect. Hello, Mark. Love your work. I'm... Say, I'm going to say this quick and easy. I was just wondering if you're familiar with the Mandela effect. Yep, I've been briefed. You mean the Mandela effect? The Mandel, the Mandelta effect. I, I can't remember what it's called. More specifically, the theory that maps are changing. I seem to remember the Gulf of Mexico being more open. Hmm. Any questions, give me a call. That's from Bobby. I, I, now I'm going to have to look at the Gulf of Mexico again. Thanks for screwing up my morning. This one's called Meteorites. Mark, in a flat earth model, how do we address meteorites? Oh, come on. You know I get this this question, what, one out of every 20? Are they falling bits of the dome? No, I doubt it. How do they burn? Uh, that's just the atmosphere burning those things up. Uh, what about asteroids? In fact, if you fire a bullet fast enough through the atmosphere, it's going to burn. Uh, what about asteroids or comets? Same sort of thing. Well, asteroids or comets, though, they don't land. So they would just be part of the display system. Meteorites, they're just rocks and being thrown in. Pieces of metal or at speed. This one's called Look Familiar. Uh, pictures taken from Colorado. Oh, it's awfully pretty. And that was sent by David Schmidt. Thanks, guys. Yeah, great shot. Welcome to wonderful Colorado. Husband, wife, and young son. Yep, I miss Colorado. It was really pretty. But I also missed the water a lot when I was out there. Because remember, I grew up on a beach. Not the greatest beach in the world. I mean, it's a, it's a northwest beach. It's not California or Florida. Uh, but it, uh, it was a nice beach. This one's called Hello from Saudi Arabia, Flat Earth. Dear Mark, first of all, I would like to thank you for all your efforts in this matter. It is appreciated. I am a Saudi person, electrical engineer, 38 years old. For the last couple of years, I've been trying to find the truth behind Flat Earth. And the vision is more clear now. I have watched a decent number of hours and referred to many references, which all proved the flat earth. I ha just have one highlight. Are you aware that the holy book of Quran, many of whose theories of sun, moon, and flat earth are clearly mentioned? Yes, I am. I am not here to introduce Islam or anything, but I would just like to know if you are aware or not. Looking for your answer to drive more questions and discussions. Uh, Ibrahim Moffa. 
And yeah, yeah, I know, I know full well. I mean, look, it, it's not a big secret that Islam, uh, Christianity, and Judaism share a lot of the same stories. I mean, almost verbatim, some of the same stories. Uh, and so why, you know, there's so much division between those three, eh, that's a whole nother thing. But uh, yeah, I am fully, fully aware of it. Thank you for that. This one's called Survival Guide. Hello, Mark. My name is Samantha. My husband told me you were offering a free survival guide. I was wondering if he was correct. If so, I would like to know if you could send me one, please. Thank you. That's from Samantha. And yes, I did. So hopefully you'll never have to use it. We still got time for a few more. Let's do this one called Flat Earth. Mark, so I just watched one of your videos on YouTube about Flat Earth and also about the sergeant that flew to Antarctica. That's the military spelling. And well, it sounds very convincing and everything, but how is it that you do know that the Earth is flat and not round? The real question is why are the planets... Why are there planets and why are, oh, he's just going to ask a whole bunch of questions, but we'll read them off real fast. We're not going to answer them, but we'll just, this is what the sort of emails I got. Why are there planets? Why are there stars above us? Also, why is the moon around, round, around? <laughs> and so is the sun, but not the planet. Why is the planet flat? Also, I have not seen a video yet of the inner earth. So if there is an inner earth and the earth is flat, I don't understand what makes sense. And I also don't understand how gravity works. There's no punctuation, by the way. If the world is flat, is there's lots of questions. I'm sorry, but it would be cool if you could get back to me and maybe you can help me understand a little bit. And maybe I can wrap my head around this whole flat earth thing. Thank you. That was, that was one sentence. The whole thing that beginning to end that's from monkey chi nine channel. Wow. Awesome. Again, it's in his head now. It's not going away. This one's called Motorola Insider with NASA. Hi, Mark. I wrote to you before about the many fresh things I could bring to your platform. My father was a naval reconnaissance radio operator. He would get dropped off on the islands near Hawaii in World War II and stare over the horizon and call enemy ships in. His job was looking over the horizon at warships with a telescope and backpack crank radio and Morse code. In Morse code? I think it's Morse, M-O-R-S-E, not Morris, like Morse the cat. Uh, from, was it the Friskies commercials? In short, in 1947, Motorola opened in Franklin Park, Illinois. They recruited him because he used his the first hand crank backpack radios. He was an azimuth specialist and went on to be a scientist and electronic engineer for the early space program, and the rest is history. I have over five fresh flat earth proofs, including early UFO detectors he helped design to fascinating true stories. Plus, I run two mobile learning labs in Rockford, Illinois. I'm not a crackpot. I'm uh, faced with a desire to come out on flat earth and have public debates. I have a huge public voice in Rockford, Illinois. I want to talk with you. I have over 1,500 daily blogs called Morning in the Word with Gus.blogspot.com. Hope to hear back. Thanks, Gus Hall, Director of Operations, uh, Center for Nonviolence. Um, yeah, if you have five fresh flat earth proofs, I'd love to hear them, but I, I don't go for cliffhangers anymore. So you got to just give them to me and you know, maybe maybe they'll resonate. Maybe they won't. I'm not going to steal them, but but I'll, I will ask you if I can use them if, if they're good enough. Oh, how many more can we do? A couple. This one's called Flat Earth Clues Interview 168. And this is from, if it'll open, looks like it's not going to open. It's just spinning, spinning, spinning. It's from Robert Don. He's just saying thank you for, for doing the interview. So thank you for that, Don, because I, for whatever he is, not going to open. This one's called A Clear Sign to Read. And the email's spinning. It's spinning. And it's not doing anything. There we go. This one's called, oh, sorry, clear sign to read. Hi, Mark, a new photo for your collection taken today on this sign at Cleverly's Lancashire, UK. It asks, have you seen the Isle of Man from here? Yes, I have, and it's 60 miles away. Thanks, Eric. Oh, yeah, so it's just a, it's just a tourist sign that says, have you seen the Isle of Man? Which is interesting because it's a, like a flatter proof. You shouldn't be able to see it from 60 miles away. Awesome. All right, this one's called Car Show This Weekend with F.E. Decals. Um, bu -bu -bu. Well, it's, I'm not going to read this one. This is from Troy in New Brunswick, Canada. I, I, 
I'm, I like it. It's a good email, but it's a little bit long and well, it's we go over the star stuff. Uh, but thank you about that. And this is another the Isle of Man thing. He responded to me. We'll delete that one. This one's called. Which one should we end on? We're coming up to the end, so I'd li I like to have a good ending. Uh, this is called The Beatles Were Flat Earthers. Could be. Good. Uh, Mark, the fool on the hill sees the sun going down, and the eyes in his head see the world spinning round. That's from Lennon and McCartney. They knew. The Beatles knew about Flat Earth. I don't know why I'm so happy about that. Oh, screw it. I'm jumping for joy. And that's from Bruce. It's cool. I like it. Did they know? Do, do a lot of artists know, probably. This one's called Survival Guide. We're not going to end on the Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Going to try and send you a little compilation video I just made. It's of some UK street activism. It's a little crappy as this is the first time I've ever used a media player. Got a 30-day free trial. Took me a couple of hours, so I hope you find it entertaining. Feel free to use it or make it better. Let me know if it doesn't work. Stay flat. That's from DDG. Thank you for that. And I did send him the survival guide to boot. And this one's called Hello Buddy. Mark, so how do you become a disin disinfo agent then? If it pays lots, how can I apply? <laughs> Didn't sign his name, but just so you know, your name comes in, you know, it, it shows up in, in the ID section. So that's from David Gilbert, G U I L B E R T, and his email address is dgdavidgilbert at gmail.com. And uh, how do you become a disinfo agent? I have no idea. I, I don't know if there's an application or do you, you have to be recruited by the government. I have no freaking idea. But thank you for that. This one's called... Enjoy the, the Flat Earth Clues Worm Their Way to Another vi Victory. Hi, Mark. Your Flat Earth Clues are now at the top of the leaderboard at slither.io thought you might want to pick of the event thanks for all your hard work really love your shows have fun in edmonton sorry that i'm going to miss you but robbie will sure show you a good time you'll have a great time for the conference i am sure all the best bob mckay enjoy the pick you know what let's end on that one uh, because even though that email was a long time ago the uh, I did just get back from Edmonton, Canada for the the first Flat Earth conference up there. It was really great. We had over 200 200 250 people, I think, and all the speakers went went up really well. We had a fire alarm at the end, but it was a Canadian fire alarm, so it was really polite, which was weird. We didn't have to leave. We just kept doing our stuff. And I'm looking forward to the, to the Denver conference, and I'll try to rem remind people as we keep going. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do after this, today's Sunday, is Strange World on Tuesday, where we have Jeffrey Grupp as a guest. He'll be coming in on the second hour. The first hour, I think we're going to get phone calls and everything working. So that's it, guys. Uh, thank you for everyone that wrote in so far. And thank you for everyone that's going to write into the future. Remember, you have, you have Flatter's questions. I'm going to keep doing these as long as I can until it just gets overwhelming. I know we keep falling behind, but the email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.